Well, welcome everyone here this morning. And if you're watching this, it's because I'm sick and not here. On Tuesday of this week, I started getting a cough and fever and headache, and I'm like, oh no. Um, so, I don't know, I may be here or you may be watching me online. I, I wanted to film ahead of time, and thank you Jake and my wife, um, because we're kind of following this series and I didn't want a gap in it. So we're uh, doing a sermon series on America. Please wake up soon. I mean this year. And that especially means you as well, the Church of God Universal in the United States of America. The church needs to wake up. The church has the answer for the problems that our nation is facing. Quick review of the first two parts. Number one, we looked at the verse in Proverbs 14, verse 34, that righteousness exalts a nation. God blesses a nation when a nation does what is right, that makes the Lord their God. And sin brings disgrace and lowers and brings a nation under God's discipline or punishment. We also looked at Psalm 33, verses 12 to 22, but I'm just going to highlight. It says there, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And I really believe the United States was under this tremendous blessing because we were this Christian nation, and God was so important. All, all of our coins, in God we trust. You know, it was just in the fabric of our nation. We went over the principle that in Psalm 33, the Lord says, No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. So that no nation is actually saved because they're mighty or powerful. A nation that... Um, follows Jesus Christ is the nation that God blesses and protects. And it's not by the size of the nation or the size of the army or the amount of natural resources that a nation has, but it's the blessing of God that comes upon a nation. We looked last week at Luke 13, a very important truth that Christians need to remember. That unfortunately, when God brings his discipline on a nation that many Christians, because they live in that nation, will, will experience the same displeasure. We, we, we may face the same consequences that everyone else experiences because as a whole, we're part of the nation. So, for instance, I don't know if I have COVID or not. COVID seems to be a worldwide kind of judgment, wake up to the nations of the whole world. But there is no doubt that of all the nations in the world, the United States of America has been suffering and hurting more than any other nations. And in fact, even Christians can be getting hit with COVID. And if you're watching this, it's because I'm at home probably with COVID. So we went then to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And if you want to turn there, it would be good. And I went over, we began to go over when a nation that used to follow God and follow his commandments turns from God, then God removes his blessing and these curses come upon the nation. And we started last week about this discussion of the plague of diseases. And that's in verse 20. Well, let's, I'll start in verse 20. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, and rebuke in everything you put your hand to until you are destroyed and come to sudden ruin because of the evil you have done in forsaking him. God doesn't look on pleasure on a country that forsakes his name, his, his laws. The Lord will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation. And so I went over with you last week that indeed 
the United States is being hit with this plague of diseases, as I call it, over the last 20 years, the, the amount of people getting diseases in the United States has grown dramatically. In fact, 47% of the U.S. population, 150 million Americans, suffer from at least one chronic disease. So let's read on now. This is, now we're kind of getting into some new material. So verse 21, the Lord will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blight and mildew, which will plague you until you perish. The sky over your head will be bronze, the ground beneath you iron. The Lord will turn the rain of your country into dust and powder. It will come down from the skies until you are destroyed. So instead of atmospheric blessings, and just to remind you, when a country is following the Lord, then the Lord, in verse 12, brings the blessing of atmospheric um, blessings. So verse 12 says, The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work of your hands. So when a nation is following God, God brings the rain at the proper time in the proper season so that a nation can reap a bountiful supply of food. But when a nation turns from the Lord, then the Lord brings scorching heat and drought. Global warming. The whole world seems to kind of be is kind of under a judgment of the Lord with global warming, climate change, global warming. Overall, about 79% of Americans say human activity contributes a great deal to climate change. Two in 10, about 20%, believe human activity plays very little role, if at all, in climate change. The 20% who do not believe that there is a major climate change issue going on are usually conservative people and tend to live in areas of the country in the United States that are not experiencing as much damage yet. Parts of the country that are not experiencing the lack of rain or forest fires or ocean issues or water supply. And let's be honest, most of those 20% are Christians who are kind of like, um, we just don't believe that humans are creating the climate change, the heating of our planet. So let me play with you because I guess it's scary to me if humans aren't bringing us the plague of drought and heat. As Christians, surely we don't believe it's just fate. God doesn't just allow fate to take place. So if it's not human caused, then obviously you are following the scripture and you would say God is allowing it. It's a plague of drought from the Lord disciplining the United States of America as well as the world. And to me, Christians, that's even more frightening than if humans are causing climate change. You see, if humans are causing climate change, then there's some hope that maybe the humans can undo what they're doing. But if indeed you don't believe that, that it's being caused by humans, then you're saying it's done by God, and that should cause you such pause, such a fear that what's happening in the world and what's happening specifically in our country is at the hand of God according to his word. And, you know, that makes the answer very scary. Here is according to the U.S. government on drought conditions, brand new, this is as of December 21, 2021, so just a couple weeks ago, 55.2% of the lower 48 states are in drought conditions. And in fact, it is so bad 
The drought has persisted for so long in the southwest that some scientists say it is a mega drought that it's emerging in the region. And a mega drought is similar to what's happened in the past, perhaps worse than some that have occurred over the last 1,200 years that last for 40 years. All I can tell you is there is great concern in those states with the water supply, with the crops that feed us the farmland, and it is a scary situation that is occurring. But let us move on, and let's look at the, our enemies. In the Word of God, if you follow the Lord, in verse 7 of chapter 28, verse 7, it says, The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They'll come at you in one direction, but flee from you in seven. And then it talks about, in verse 10, then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will fear you. So I shared with you that an army, Psalm 33, an army is not saved by the size of its army, you know, what weapons it has. It's saved because it follows the Lord. And it's victorious over the enemies because it follows the Lord. And there used to be, so the United States was this Christian nation, and there was a fear among the nations of the world that the United States stood for God and and we had the scriptures that told us what was right and wrong. So there was a fear, and we were very victorious over our enemies. However, to the nation that turns from the Lord. Verse 25, the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You will come at them from one direction, but flee from them in seven. And you will become a thing of horror to all the kingdoms on earth. So when you don't want God blessing your nation and you don't want God blessing your military, then you have what we've just experienced in Afghanistan. November 3rd, 2021, the State Department of the United States believes that there are still as many as 14,000 U.S. citizens that are trapped in Afghanistan, not including thousands and thousands of Af Afghanistans that were partnering with us to help to bring change to their country. Here's what the news says, the experts. The USA has experienced the largest decline in global reputation, except for China, in their hasty withdrawal from the country of Afghanistan. We went into Afghanistan in one direction, and we're fleeing from seven directions to all the borders and airplanes, and it is humiliating. Instead of the countries of the world fearing this great Christian nation and what it stands for and freedom and what's right. Now, the nations, it says here it's that, that when you get defeated, you're a horror to all the kingdoms of the, of the earth. A horror. And it says the greatest decline in global reputation except for China. China is actually happy that we lost. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Yeah, I think because we lost in a relatively small country that we were unable to help after so many years being there, I think Russia is emboldened. I think China is emboldened. I think North Korea is emboldened. I think Iran is emboldened. And that fear about the United States is waning and going away. Some say this is the actual, the very first loss that we've ever experienced, and it might be a sign of the times to come. But let us read on, because it kind of even gets sadder and, and worse. Verse 28, Deuteronomy 28, verse 28, the Lord will afflict you with madness, blindness, and confusion of mind. So we went over the plague of disease. This is the plague of mental illness. Totally separate from half the country that has a disease, a chronic disease. How many people in the United States have a mental illness? According to the National Institute of Mental Health, one in five U.S. adults had a mental illness in 2019. 
51.5 million people. And it's been growing again through the years. Mental illness is on the rise among adolescents and young adults. And factors like social media may be the leading cause. Now, I want to explain to you something about mental illness. You see, I think we could all be prone to it, but God gives us the word to help our thinking. And he gives us the spirit of God to minister to our minds. It says in the Bible that God did not give us a spirit of timidity, a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. So when people follow God's word, when people are filled with his spirit, when people have Jesus living in them, there's a ministry of the Holy Spirit to the mind to correct wrong thinking. That, of course, social media is messing up the minds of so many people. The Word of God has a healing and there's a power by the Spirit of God to bless the minds of people. According to a study published by the American Psychological Association, the rates of mental illness have significantly grown among females and the wealthy. The list of the top major mental struggles that are on the rise, anxiety, depression, panic disorder, PTSD, bipolar disorder, and eating disorders are all significantly on the rise. Now this is interesting. Here's the state of mental health in America as it continues to get worse. Between 2017 and 2018, 19% of adults experienced a mental illness, an increase of 1.5 million adults from mental illness from the previous year. This is all before COVID. We know since COVID has come two years ago that mental illness has even gone higher. Rates of depression increased by 63% between 2009 and 2017 in young adults aged 18 to 25 years old. Look at this. This is very interesting to me. Young adults between the ages of 18 and 25 had the highest prevalence of mental illness. 29.4% of the young adults in that age experience mental illness each year. 30%, one out of three. That's a lot. Compared to adults between the ages of 26 and 49, only 25% experience mental illness. And this is so fascinating to me. Those that are 50 and older, only 14.1% of the older people experience mental illness. You know, it's the older people that are still, as a whole, following God, following his word, that the churches are full of older people that are filled with the Spirit of God that are ministering to their minds. But the young people in our world today, in our country, about 30% at least are now atheists, agnostics, and nuns. And that group is growing. The group of young people that are saying... We don't want God. We don't know if he exists or not. We're not. We don't care. We don't want God. And as that group is growing, then they don't know the blessing and the power of the Holy Spirit to minister to the mind. So back in Deuteronomy 28, relationships, believe it or not, relationships are even Affect it. So in verse 30, it says, You will be pledged to be married to a woman, but another will take her. So there's even a breakdown in relationships, in people finding their soulmate, their partner. In fact, there are more single adults in our country than married ever before. And Time Magazine says, they know pretty much that 25% of all millennials are never going to get married. And, and it, for the younger generations, they believe it's moving up to 50%. 50% of the younger generations may never get married because they cannot find the right spouse. Now, I'm going to get theological here with you because I happen to believe that God loves 
that the Lord has the right person, your, your soulmate. Just like when he brought to Adam Eve, and Adam was like, this is, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And God, I think God, see, God causes it to rain on the wicked and the just. God will bless people that don't know him with amazing careers and jobs, hoping that the kindness that God shows them will lead them to the Lord. And God often will guide you, even if you're not a believer, to the right spouse. And then hopefully you'll come to the Lord and, and you'll be married to the right person that will come to the Lord. So, but when you turn away from God, when you go, I don't want God. I don't want God helping me. It's God that actually brings that one right individual into your life. But now you don't want him. And so now you can't find that one right individual out of the billions that there are out there. I was reading why psychologists believe that it's harder to find a mate. I'll, I'll let you read through the bottom ones, but I wanted to read the top one, which is Christian values. We're living in a time where there are fewer shared values. My wife and I met about almost 40 years ago. And we had different hobbies and different interests. And through the years, we decided, hey, let's find similar hobbies and interests. And we want to hang out a lot more. But you see, the one thing Robin and I both knew that we had was we shared the same exact biblical values which were the values contained in the Word of God. And so, the Lord laid out, he lays out all this truth, all these important values, and I knew my wife, and she knew myself, that if God said it, we believe it. We're going to practice it. And so, for Robin and I, because we were both in submission to the Word of God, it made the marriage a whole lot better. Now, what's happening today is that Christians are viewing the Bible like a cafeteria. And so different Christians are going, okay, well, I like that value from the Bible, and I like that value. Uh, this one I don't agree with. I think it's outdated. I don't think it fits today's culture. So I, I reject that value. I want that value. Those two values I don't reject. And now it is hard for that Christian that's cherry-picking the values they want to find another Christian who's also cherry-picking the values that they want. And, of course, they don't match because if you're really going to have a great marriage, then both the female and the male have to be, like, submitted to this is what God says and we're going to follow this and, and it's all true. So, yes, I feel bad. It is even harder for Christians to find another Christian to marry because you're playing cafeteria Christian instead of completely submitting that God's word is absolutely true. Last one I want to cover is it says in verse 30, you will build a house, but you will not live in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will not begin to enjoy its fruit. So there's a curse that comes on your home. You'll, you'll build a house, but you'll lose it. During COVID, one-tenth of people that own homes are going to lose their homes to foreclosure, bankruptcy. One out of ten in the United States. You might think, oh, that that's, doesn't seem that bad. That doesn't seem like a lot. Let's think about this for a second. Let's say there's 400 families that come to LifePoint Alliance. 400 families. One out of 10 lose their home. That means 40 families or individuals lose their house. Do you not think 
that that is pretty shocking and horrible to have 40 families lose their home. But yet that's what's taking place in the United States. The blessing has been removed and people are suffering and losing beautiful homes that they bought or, you know, got from Ryan Holmes or Miranda, whoever. So I want to close with why do you, God, why do you discipline and remove your blessing from us as a nation? What did we, what did we do? And we're going to have to pick this up again because I'm going to skip some things, but I want you to jump to verse 45. All these curses will come on you. They will pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the Lord your God and observe the commands and decrees he gave you. It's verse 47 that's aimed at the church and the Christians that concerns me. In verse 47, it says, Because you did not serve the Lord your God joyfully and gladly in the time of prosperity, therefore in hunger and thirst and nakedness and dire poverty, you will serve the enemies the Lord sends against you. And that was so convicting. The United States has been experiencing decades of prosperity. But has our nation, has the church been serving the Lord? Have you been serving God? Have you been using the gifts and the talents? Have you been serving God gladly and joyfully? Part four will be next week. Father, I pray for the church. We have been blessed in the United States. And the church, I think, has, has experienced a lot of prosperity. And we've become lazy, spiritually lazy. And we have not been faithful in serving you, especially giving out the gospel. But Lord, as we're praying here, Start revival in our hearts. May I, Lord, serve you with incredible joy and gladness. For you are the amazing God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless your saints, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hope to see you next week. God bless. Bye-bye.